godly thing. This assembly, my brother and clergy, we are here to celebrate. We celebrate because God has been good and y'all have been good to us. Amen. We've had this moment, this opportunity to rejoice over what God has done. And y'all, what God is doing and what God continues to do. Y'all still believe in miracles. Amen. 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 Where miracles are something that happened in the Old Testament. When Jesus walked the face of the earth, miracles still happen today. Amen. Sometimes, sometimes, those of us who are called to this preaching, this ministry of passion, get shook a little. I had heard of the home going of Pastor Washington yeah. on a Sunday. I heard on a Sunday. And then on Tuesday, I was home. My wife and I were at the house. And my phone rings. And I looked down at my phone. And I had a call coming from Leroy Watlington. Amen. Slowly, I picked it up, not quite sure who was going to answer on the other side. But it was Sister Watlington sharing with us that it asked for us to do this because God has been good. Amen. And so we want to celebrate what God has done Amen. and what God is doing uh, in this moment together. Uh, and, and so uh, we have a program. Pastor Watlington was all about it. Amen. To be done, if it was going to be done, then it needed to be done decently yes. and in order. order. Yes. So we're going to follow the program as it is said. Uh, there have been some allowances made for some adjustments. We will make those adjustments as uh, we move forward. Uh, the program next asks for request a reading of the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament will be read by Reverend Joe Bailey and the New Testament by Minister Janelle Howard. Preacher, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, yeah. to my pastor who is in his absence, Pastor Jeffrey Johnson, second, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Wellington, yeah. mother, pastors, ministers, family, and friends. Our Old Testament scripture this evening is going to come from the book of Lamentation. Chapter 3, we read eight verses beginning at verse 24. The scripture says, The Lord is my portion, saves my soul. Therefore I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone and keep silent, because God has laid it on him. Let him put on put his mouth in the dust, that there may be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes him, and be full of reproach. For the Lord will not cast off forever. 
Though he caused us grief, yet he will show compassion according to his multitude of his mercies. Note the sentence, the note the scripture. May the Lord bless the hearers and doers of his most holy in the night. Amen. Established. I'll be reading the New Testament, John 14, out of the King James Bible. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Right. And whither I go, ye know the way, ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, my Father, but by me. This is the reading of the New Testament. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of this book. Amen. 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 Next, we'll have a prayer by Reverend John Minion, followed by a selection from the choir. Amen.
but one that is sober. Lord, let us leave here with a deeper reverence, a deeper love, a deeper sense of holiness and godliness. Lord, we ask that you would bring a special sense of comfort and peace to the Waddington family. Upon his wife, upon his children, Lord God. Though they have lost their father, though they have lost their husband, they still have a good father and a good bridegroom in you. Lord God, let his life and his death be an example to even all of us as to what it means to live and die for you. I ask this now in your name we pray. Amen.
heard Pilgrim choir. And I, I didn't know how bad I needed it before I heard it. I was trying to point out to Sister Janelle, I don't know what kind of power she had. I said, but they did a song before I talked. Amen. It is good to be here today. Uh, I was sitting there and have been for a couple of days since I got the call from <coughs> Sister Wallington and she extended this uh, gigantic offer to me. Uh, and there's so much gratitude that I have inside of my heart for this occasion. Uh, I, I, I was sitting and, and thinking uh, this, I have mixed emotions. It's a time for me of, uh, of sadness and of gladness. I'm glad that Pastor Wallington had he what God has said in Revelation 21. There's no more crying, sickness, no more right. death, no more yes. sorrow, yes. none of this earthly yes. stuff. He's yes. gotten the freedom that Jesus had told him about in John 14 that right. he's going to go, yes. go yes. Um, be with yes. the Father and come back and receive us unto him. So he preached it, he believed it, and he lived it. Yes. Amen. So, so he's fine, y'all. We just got yes. to deal with, with the hurt and pain that we had. Amen. And, and so I, I thought, Sister Waddington, uh, what would I say as a representative of the ministers? And, and I began uh, to think about uh, this not being just a loss for the Waddington family. It's, it's not a loss for Indianapolis or the state of Indiana. It's not a loss for Oxford, Mississippi. Right. And this is a loss for the entire world. Amen. Amen. Because he was a giant like that. And yeah. Pastor Wallington uh, taught and served. And a lot of folks, we don't know the extension of his arm that he was faithful to God for, All that right. this world had become a better place. And so I, I thought about the ministers and the, the pastors and the preachers uh, that was here. And I began to think that. Uh, all the ministers and pastors are outside of Pilgrim that didn't sit on the pastor while it's in. Yeah. If I use a family analogy, you would be like cousins. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Those of us who sit up under him, yeah. we family. Yeah. Yeah. And we are the immediate family. Y'all cousins, and I'm sure that y'all uh, uh, received uh, some good stuff from him because if you encountered him, that's the only thing you can get from him. Right. There's nothing bad coming out of him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So I, I thought about uh, what would I say? I can't speak uh, for my brothers here, uh, the Pilgrimites, as they would say, or something of that nature. But those of us who sit under uh, Pastor Wallington, uh, one thing that I can't say that I'm sure that we all can agree on uh, that sit up under him is that he, he was truly not a respecter of ministers. Amen. If he loved us all the same, uh, if he uh, uh, gave you a compliment, about something he would surely turn around and admonish you about something too. Uh, he didn't have a problem telling you what was wrong or what was right. But if you didn't like it, that was on you. He was going to do what God told him to do. I know that personally because I had some of those experiences. Amen. Uh, uh, but he turned around then and made sure that when he know that I felt that little that he had to correct me, not the way he did it, just the fact that I know that I was an heir. Uh, and he told me how much he loved me and he he brought me and made me feel good about something and sent me on some assignments and things like that. That's who it was. Amen. Uh, Dr. Wallington, uh, I'm sure that all of us could say that uh, we had our own personal relationship with Pastor Wallington here. Uh, and he, we could call him and talk to him about anything. I, I remember once personally I was going through some family issues and I needed to, a woman's point of view. And I told Dr. Wallington, I said, Pastor Wallington, I said, I need to talk to him. Sister Pearlie Wallington. He said, that's fine. You want to talk to me and her? You want to talk to her by yourself? I, I said, I really prefer to talk to her by myself. And he said, well, that's fine. He said, um, Sister Wallington met with me and, I mean, truly blessed me. We had lunch and everything. And it was a blessing. But that's the type of man he was. Amen. Uh, he wasn't intimidated by nothing. He knew who he was. He knew who his wife is. Amen. Uh, and so I, I just loved him and appreciated him. And when I say I, I know that's an extension of everybody who sit up under him. So let me just share this for the immediate family. I want y'all to know those who had sit up under him. Uh, there's Reverend Butler. I like to call out the name. Reverend Butler, Reverend Belton, Reverend Marion, Reverend Dykes, Reverend Campbell, Reverend uh, Bailey, Reverend Moore, amen, uh, Reverend Wilson, uh, Minister Howard, Minister Humphrey. There's three pastors that had came out from those who sit up under him, Pastor Shelby and Wilson, and even myself. 
Um, and, and that's just who he was. He was birthing things into this world, birthing things of God. And there's, there, I, there's some old uh, pastors that are sitting up under him right now. Amen. Uh, just because he's gone uh, doesn't mean that everything he put in them is still not holding true. Amen. So, so God going to take what he put in them and do what he intended to happen when he left Oxford and came here. Amen. Amen. So, Sister Wallington, on behalf of the minister, on behalf of the pastors, I just want you to say that not only did we love your husband, but we loved his wife. Amen. I knew he was somebody that I wanted to follow, and he sit up in church and said, I I'll cut somebody over my mother, and I'll shoot somebody over my wife. And I, and he I said, yeah, I, I can follow him, but I'm not sticking up with those who love And, and so that's what I loved about him. He was who he was, and he stuck to his guns. Amen. Amen. And, and Pastor Johnson, uh, Pastor Johnson, just work before I sit down. You might well get ready to start hearing some. Well, and Pastor Wallington, well, well, Pastor Wallington said, and, and Pastor Wallington, because they did the same thing when Pastor Wallington came, but Pastor Shields. Well, Pastor Shields, what he would do, well, Pastor, and Pastor Wallington said, okay, that's fine. But, uh, thank you very much, but here we go in this direction. <laughs> God bless God. Keep it again. Thank you for this honor. Love To all of you here today. This is a personal thing for me. All right. Very personal. I stand before you to share with you how I am going to miss this man of God, which sometimes I call him Dr. Leroy Wallington, sometimes I call him Pastor Wallington, sometimes Leroy Wallington, but all just Leroy. Yeah. I will miss the visits at his office when he had attorney money because he was treasurer of the Union District yeah. and the state convention. Yeah. I knew I better have them forms in the order. <laughs> I couldn't come in there with a piece of notebook paper. I already know yeah. he was going to let me know. All right. But then he would say, how are things going with you? And I said, fine. He said, hi, it's Brother Paul. I said, good. I will miss his teaching. On Tuesday, the Bible class. Yeah. Where we would share his testimonies about the goodness and the mercy of God to yeah. him and all of us. Mm -hmm. I will miss traveling with him and Sister Wallington mm -hmm. to the winter board meeting. Then we stop at Boom Land. Yeah. Thinking we were going to get some food and he would just get us some candy. <laughs> but I should have had. But when we got to the convention, he would make sure that Willie and I would have a ticket to the president banquet. All right. Oh, how important that was to us. I could go and tell you how much I would miss him. Last, his compassion and love that he showed for us. During our time of need, on November the 14th, 2022, I received a call from Sister Pearl Walton. She said, Miss Benny, no one could say that about you. Leroy has had a stroke. But then she said, he has something to say. He said, tell him, he can call. I said, hello. And tell him to stop running you all over the world. <laughs> I would miss him and I could go on and on. How he considered others, even in his time of illness. Yeah. So to you, Sister Pearl Walton, yes, I thank you for allowing, for allowing us to share in parts of your lives yeah. during our difficult time. Yeah. I thank you for giving me permission to talk to your husband mm -hmm. 
whatever I wanted to without saying, what do you want? Yeah. I want to thank you. Amen. Last, we shared many scriptures together. Mm -hmm. And I know you know them. And I know we'll get through, you'll get through this. Yeah. Last, the song, the song says, mm -hmm. the Lord is close to yeah. the broken heart yeah. and save those who are crushed in spirit. Amen. I want to thank you for sharing your husband. tonight for what is truly a celebration yeah. <clears throat> to the preacher of the hour, Pastor Timothy Ramsey, mm -hmm. to <coughs> the leadership and pastor elect, Pastor Jeffrey Johnson II. state and national officers I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus who is absolutely the Christ Amen. so I have a threefold task today uh, the first one is to remind us that the quality of a man with an assignment and anointing on his life manifest itself best through the woman that God gives him. Amen. 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 We are here celebrating the life of Dr. Leroy Wallington. Amen. We would not be were it not for Curly Wallington. Amen. Amen. Stand on our feet and give God a hand of praise for him. Cutting the wind 
of a place that doesn't normally go to mm -hmm. without there being some challenge in the air. Right. There is no flying without turbulence. Dr. Leroy Wallington's life was evidence that there is turbulence, mm -hmm. but because there's turbulence, there doesn't have to be a crash. That's right. All right. Have you ever thought about how many planes take off every day? Mm -hmm. yeah. Day and night. And rarely do you hear about a crash. Amen. Well, Amen. That's because there is a way that you can fly above where you normally fly mm -hmm. if you let them teach you how to do it. Come on, that's right. That's right. right. Second thing I learned about flying yeah. is that Every plane takes off with a landing in mind. Right. Yes, sir. There's not a plane that's ever taken off that wasn't going somewhere. Amen. The fact that it took off yeah. meant that it had a destination. Right. Yes, sir. Right. Now, sometimes when you're flying, you can fall asleep and forget where you are in the middle of the flight. But that doesn't change the flight. The fact that you, your flight is going somewhere. Children of God must always remember that no matter how much excuse me, turbulence happens on the flight. This plane took off going somewhere. And no matter what it feels like along the way, if, if you, there's chemo along the way, if there's struggle along the way, if there are heartaches along the way, yes, you have to remember in the turbulence that along the way mm -hmm. will be, there will also be a landing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It wouldn't have taken off. In fact, the plane can't take off until the manifesto is ready. Yes, sir. That means it, until it knows who's on it and where it's going, it won't take off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I need somebody to be encouraged today by the life of Dr. Newark Washington. How he lived knowing that I got cancer, but I'm still going somewhere. Yes, sir. That's a great big deal, especially for preachers. I'm talking yeah. about moderator now. As preachers, because it's easy to get so caught up in what ain't right yeah. that you forget you're on a flight that's going somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Last thing, and I'm going to get to the last thing I have to do. One other thing I learned about flights, and that is there comes a time. I bring all this turbulence and flying together. All right. Pastor Griffin, there comes a time that on every flight, no matter how much turbulence, all right. how rough the flight is, how many tears, or how rough the flight is, yeah. how butt wrenching the flight is, how shaky the flight is. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. There's going to come a time on every flight I've ever been on. Well, when it's time to land, yeah. the pilot will come on the radio. I see where you're going, Reverend. And all of these people have been walking and serving and passing out coffee and meeting your needs and giving you your pillows and blankets. But when you get ready to land, the pilot comes on and says, everybody, yeah. sit down. You been helping him, sit down. You gave him a blanket, sit down. You gave him drinks. Sit down. I gotta go to the back. Uh -uh, right now. Sit down. Because it's landing time. And Dr. when it's landing time, it's about the pilot and the plane. The pilot don't want nobody else doing nothing when it's time to land the plane. But the pilot. I can't help but to believe that early Friday morning. Just after the break of day. As much as you loved him, God arranged for you to be out of the room. As much as y'all been praying for that, God arranged. I know y'all love him, but he's getting ready to land now. And landing is my job. Be encouraged. Because if God can keep the plane up all these years, he can land it just like he's supposed to land. Thing three. Mm -hmm. The Bible.
Bible admonishes us to care for widows. Is that right? Yes, sir. And so what we're going to do right now, first I'm going to explain a couple of things. We're going to lift an offering My Lord. specifically for Sister Pearly Wallet. Amen. Now before I go forward, let me explain what's not happening here. This is not a GoFundMe offering. Okay. No, sir. Okay. No. Okay. Don't go out of here and say the, the moderator got up because the Wallingtons couldn't pay for a funeral. Right. Oh. This ain't got nothing to do, and that's a lie. Right. So that don't, don't, that, that ain't it. This is a demonstration mm -hmm. of how you treat the wife oh. of a faithful soldier. Oh. Yeah. Yeah to the district, state, and national kingdom work in, in our world. Amen. That's, that's number one. Number two, what is happening in the life of Pearly Washington right now is going to happen Amen. in the life of most of you in the direction my hand is stretched. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 3 John chapter 3 and verse 13 says, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brother. Right. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest expressions we can show to have our affection about the Leroy Wellington, leading with the pastors, is to sow into this woman of God. Amen. 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 Brother, the deacon from Pilgrim that I spoke to earlier, would you please come and man the place you might read to? Mm -hmm. now, now, this morning, we're not, we're not going to count. Amen. Amen. It's not going in the back. Amen. We're going to put it in these bags and hand it to these boys. Amen. I believe they can protect mama's money. Amen. 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 Preachers, we, we, we ought to lead if you can. If you can, I want you to lead. And put this $100 in here. Start this off with that. All right. Ushers, before you come, I'm going to have the preachers come, if that's okay. Amen. Is that okay? Men of God, women of God, come now. Just come now.
we're gonna calculate those funds, the treasure and the sister treasure right here, and we're gonna make sure that Sister Wallet can get a check for that amount. Amen. Amen. All right, watch as you're not being charged.
park illegally in this parking, in this uh, alleyway over here, and they are threatening to be towed. And so if you park in this alleyway over here, uh, please move your car. Amen? Okay, choir, get back in. Thank you. 
God bless your heart. We are with you in all things during this time and beyond. I want to also note and acknowledge the pastor elect of this church, Amen. Pastor Jeffrey Johnson II. Amen. 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 Give God praise. <laughs> to all of the Reverend clergy who are here tonight. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for coming to support this great occasion Amen. for Dr. Washington. Yes, yes. To all of the national and state officers and district officers who are here tonight, yes. it is my pleasure again to greet you on behalf of the General Missionary Baptist State Convention of Indiana, Amen. of which Dr. Washington served faithfully. Amen. Amen. Y'all can shout Amen. Amen. Dr. Washington served faithfully yes. in our state convention in the yes. Union District Association. Yes. Come on, y'all give God praise for that. Yes. I'm not going to, to have long remarks, but I do want to say a couple of things as president of our convention when I first came to Dr. Washington and said to him I was interested in running for the office of president. He was nothing but encouraging. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 And I told him, I said, now look, I want you to tell me some of the pitfalls. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to hear how you think I do a good job. Okay. Yeah. Tell me what I'm getting into. Yeah. And he was very honest and frank, mm -hmm. and I appreciated that with all my heart because Dr. Washington loved the convention and denominational work from the yeah. district to the national. Yeah. Amen. Praise God for that. He loved it. And uh, I want to say that when he told me he was going to retire, Sister Robinson and he said, uh, uh, I'm going to retire. And I was a little bit heartbroken because uh, when I got elected, I had thought that I would have him yeah. in the cabinet. Amen. Right. Yeah. All right. And so I said, well, Dr. Robinson, I said, I don't want to obligate you for the next 40 years if you plan to retire, but I need you All right. to serve as a special assistant mm -hmm. to me as, as president. And he said, no problem, because that's the kind of person he was. Yeah. Yeah. If he felt like he could help, yeah. he was going to help. Yeah. Brother, y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. There's some folk that Dr. Wobbington has helped that are here tonight that he never told anybody how much he helped you. Amen. That's right. That's right. There are some people throughout this city that owe much to Dr. Leroy Wobbington. Amen. And he never wanted the accolades. That's right. He never wanted to be puffed up and sitting in high places. All right. But see, that's one thing about true servants of God. Yes, yes. They don't have to have folks call their name. Yes. Do I have a witness? Yes. True servants of God don't have to have their name put in the program or, or be on the docket or any of those, those things that we get excited about. True servants of God know that their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and one of these days, they're going to hear God say, Sir, yeah. Yeah. well done. You've been faithful yeah. over a few things. 
Right. Come on up a little higher. Yeah. The last thing I want to say before I take my seat mm -hmm. is that some of us have lost confidence in that which Dr. Watlington believed in, mm -hmm. and that is denominational work. Yeah. All right. He believed it was important to know mm -hmm. why you were a Baptist. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. He believed it was important that our ministers, mm -hmm. deacons, and leaders would get Christian education yeah. Yeah. so that they would know how yeah. to do their job yeah. better in representing our Lord Jesus the Christ. Yeah. 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 He believed in taking a stand together on issues that affected a community. Dr. Watlington believed in the power of God through the church and specifically the black church. Y'all ain't saying that. I had a white friend of mine ask me one time, he said, he said, uh, he said, he, you know, he, he called me Ray. Yeah, yeah. He was a pastor. <laughs> huh? Called him by his first name, too. So he said, uh, he said Ray, I feel like I could ask you this. <laughs> Y'all know where it's going, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. He, said, uh, he said, Ray, I want to know why you feel, why, like, so why does it seem like the black church is a little behind white folks? when it came to discipleship. I'm like some of y'all right now, I'm a little offended at first. Yeah. It's one of them moments where the Holy Spirit had to step in quickly. <laughs> and I said, well, what I'm about to tell you, flesh and blood did not reveal this to me. But let me help you understand what the task of pastors like Dr. Leroy Watlington and many of these pastors who are here today yeah. and some of them who have come a long way up the rough side of the mountain. Let me tell you what we had to do. Our job on Sunday morning was to put our people back together. Yeah. Yeah. Our men who have been called boys all week long. Yeah. Knowing they were grown men, our women who served as domestics who had to put up with the unwanted advances of the minister of that house so that she could have them pennies to feed her babies. We had to put them back together emotionally, spiritually, and every other kind of way so that on Monday they wouldn't go out and kill all y'all. So don't tell me that we're behind. That seemed like pretty good discipleship to me. Preventing a mass murder. And I'm saying that because Dr. Washington came from a place where in Mississippi he had to make sure that the people he preached to were put back together from living in a racialized society. And he did his job well. And he brought that to Indianapolis. And continued to do that here in a city like Indianapolis. Yeah. It has its own problems visible and hidden yeah. when it comes to race and ethnicity. Yeah. Yeah. He kept putting people back together. Yeah. Yeah. That being said, being the president of the convention affords you some level of authority. So I'm going to declare this day yes, a day of remembrance in the annals of our General Missionary Baptist State Convention of Indiana in remembrance of Dr. Leroy Watlington, shall we always remember him on this day from this time forward. in his name from the general missionary Baptist State the of the Lord. Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for God bless you.
Lucian, Sister Lou Johnson. Pastor and Sister 
Wellington personally funded our youth's first college tour, as well as providing seed money for our book scholarship. Now to mention countless other youth activities and fundraisers. Whereas Pastor Wellington was a gifted and wise administrator, he developed policies and procedures to aid in ministry growth. His skill and integrity were sought out soon after his arrival in Indianapolis. He served as treasurer of the following 2011 National Baptist Host Committee of Indiana, Union District Missionary Baptist Association, and the General Missionary Baptist State Convention of Indiana. He also was the immediate past moderator of the Union District Missionary Baptist Association. His wisdom and leadership allowed Pilgrim and the Union District to remain viable and relevant during the, uh, the present COVID-19 pandemic. Whereas Dr. Wallington shared his love for Christ and his commitment to the Indianapolis community, he followed the Lord's mandate through the prophets Amos to let justice roll on like a river, righteous like a never falling stream. He advocated for families as chair of the board of not to believers like us, a faith-based advocate group against family and domestic violence, was an organizing member of Faith in Indiana, formerly in the can, a grassroots community organizing program, and provided racial reconciliation leadership as a member and subcommittee chair of the Indianapolis Racial uh, Coalition League. Whereas Pastor was a faithful student and a teacher of God's Word, in addition to adult Bible study, he connected with our children through the monthly children's moment. During the pandemic, he kept our seniors engaged and in fellowship through midday Bible study via Zoom. Following his retirement, even during the treatment, he continued to lead midday study. On the district level, he was the Union District Certificate of Progress Instructor. Nationally, he served as an instructor in the Minister's Division of the National Baptist Conference of Christian Education. Whereas, our church family would miss our pastor emeritus and his humble yet courageous spirit. He exemplified the five principles of the kingdom culture that he taught. Unity, excellence, integrity, support, and giving. He loved and gave to Pilgrim Church during the time that he shared with us, even uniting as a Pilgrim member. Whereas we rejoice in the, rec the recollection of his final message to us, my heavenly record from Job 16, 19, and his stern rendition of precious Lord, take my hand. Our hearts are also filled with the void of his great loss. Therefore, we resolve that we prayerfully embrace his wife, Sister Pearl of Wellington, his children, his mother, his siblings, and the entire family during this very challenging time. We extend our heart for sympathy and remind you, as Pastor Wellington did, to rely on God of all comfort, who can and will heal all sorrow. We now therefore present this resolution to the family and place a copy of this in the permanent archives of Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church. This 29th day of November 2022, Reverend Jeffrey A. Johnson, the second senior pastor, Deacon James R. Banks, board chair. Yes. And the others to acknowledge is, is the Union District Women's Association President, Sister Denise Posey, the Union District Nurses President, Sister Deborah Moore, Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Brian Show, Pastor, Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Timothy G. Taylor, Senior Pastor. Interdenominational of Greater Indianapolis, Dr. Lonnie T. Rush, President, Greater Joshua Missionary Baptist Church, Indianapolis, Indiana, Pastor Joseph M. Tunsil, South Calvary Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend John W. Woodall, Jr. Pastor, Westwood Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Larry A. Harris, Senior Pastor, Greater St. James Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Charlotte Burrell, Senior Pastor, Minister Baptist Ministers Foresight Alliance of Greater Indianapolis and Vicinity, Reverend David E. Bacon, President, Little Bell Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Sheldon T. Bradford, Pastor, Baptist Minister Alliance, Reverend Dr. Wayne T. Moore, President, Clear Creek Missionary Baptist Church, Dr. David E. L. Anderson, Senior Pastor, Christ Missionary Baptist Church, Dr. Raymond Gaffney, 
Grace Apostolic Church, Bishop Kevin M. Harrison, and First Lady Deborah D. Harrison, New Air Church, Reverend Dr. Clarence C. Moore, Pimple Rest Missionary Baptist Church, Gary, Indiana, Reverend Charles E. Adams, Jr., Bethesda Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Timothy D. Ramsey, Sr., Third Missionary Baptist Church, Davenport, Iowa, Roger Kirk, Jr., Pastor, Andre Carson, United States Congress, the National Council of Negro Women in Indianapolis Section, Judy Tribune, President, the Senior Usher Board of Pickle Missionary Baptist Church, and the Nurses Auxiliary of Pickle Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Now we shall hear from this great choir once again. Uh, and then uh, Reverend Gerald Butler will come and introduce our preacher of the year.
Jesus Christ, for he is Lord. Amen. 
Bible teaches us that when we confess, mm -hmm. we confess sincerely yeah. from our heart yeah. that we are yet been saved. Yeah. Yeah. We become possessors of eternal life. Amen. Yes, Amen. To Pastor Glenn, Jeffrey Johnson said, yeah. all the ministers, preachers, mm -hmm. and pastors, uh, giving recognition to all the state and local officers who are present here yeah. today, Amen. to our moderator, Dr. Posner, and certainly to this, to this family. Amen. Amen. Reach you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, and yeah. these three are uh, one. Yeah. 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 Next, Pastor Wadlington uh, asked me to uh, meet him over at Country Kitchen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was my first introduction to how preachers love to eat in Indianapolis. Right. <laughs> I too had been uh, a sojourner of some sorts, uh, coming from out of state yeah. uh, to the state of Indiana. And so we sat there and we ordered some fried green tomatoes. Oh, I got it. <laughs> doctor I'm trying to stay away from fried foods. <laughs> when I come here, I got to order me some fried green yeah. tomatoes. Oh, wow. But on that day, he shared something with me that just pierced my heart. He said that a man's reach should exceed his grasp. Yeah. 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 I've tried to put this together and unpack this figure out what it meant to me. Mm -hmm. Said that a person should, should try even those things that may turn out to be impossible right. in order to achieve anything worthwhile. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Life that represents strength, mm -hmm. faith, wisdom, and dignity. All right. I want to ask you if you would uh, turn with me. A very familiar passage of scripture that comes to us from the pen of the Apostle Paul. All right. Writes to his son in the faith, mm -hmm. uh, Timotheus, over in the second book of Timothy, the fourth chapter, yeah. the sixth through the eighth verse. All right. All right. It's his second letter. In here, and Paul says to Timothy, for I am now ready to be off. Yeah. Time, my departure is at hand. Yeah. I have fought a good fight. Yeah. Yeah. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. Yeah. Uh, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, uh, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. Amen. Amen. Many times when we read scripture and study scripture, try to take uh, an infinite God and place him to a finite individual. All right. Sometimes it just does not work. Yeah, yeah. If I will, I want to put the Roy Robinson's life in biblical perspective here. Yeah. Oh, All right. Yeah. Because there are some roads that end in the valley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There are some roads that end on the mountain. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So plays that end in tragedy. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Some plays end in triumph. All right. Let the truth be told, the Roy's life ended on a high note. Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 
And these past few years of his life, it's nothing that any one of us would have thought would have come to him. Mm -hmm. A man so gracious, so godly, mm -hmm. so kind, and so humble. Yeah. 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 Uh, one would think that his life would have uh, <laughs> may have ended somewhat differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. One who has gone on and who has done many things in life to a certain level of success. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Pastor, not just one great church. Oh, mm -hmm. Pastor, I believe about three churches. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one would have thought that his life would have ended possibly in full stride. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But unfortunately, sickness set in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unable to hold up the challenges of pastoring uh, that a man of his caliber, caliber probably would have wanted to do. Yes. Yeah. 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 How do we explain, the question is, how do we explain uh, these latter years of Pastor Rodlington's life? Uh -huh. What should we say of him? How could we paint this picture? How could we frame this whole thing? How do we make sense of this? How do we unpack this, this whole thing? Words of Paul come to us there that they've been lifted from uh, this preacher tonight. I fought, I, I fought a good fight. Finish my course. They they, 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 they sometimes sound lyrical as we articulate it. Oh, right. oh, yeah, yeah. Works it. Yes, what is behind them is often lost. Yes. Uh, uh, beaten. Mm -hmm. Shipwrecked. Yeah. 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 In peril on the sea. Yeah. 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 Peril on the land. Mm -hmm. Hungry, destitute. Yes. Yeah. Peril on a, a, a false brethren. Yeah. Mm. Jealous preachers. Uh -huh. what? Yeah. What? Yeah. Jealous pastors. Yeah. Yeah. And on top of that, the care of the world and even the care of the saints. Yeah. 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 One does not judge Paul for saying, I fought a good fight. Yeah. Finished my course. Yeah. But I kept the faith and I'm now ready my life to be poured out like uh, a like uh, an oblation. Yeah. 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 And I'm ready to be offered up. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. I thought of Paul and I thought about the Roy Rodlington. Mm -hmm. I asked myself if there is any correlation between these two men. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. These yeah. things. Just a few things here. I'm gonna, I'll go to my seat. Sure. I believe that Pastor Meritus Wadlington's life teaches us, mm -hmm. and we need to get this because we don't know what life is going to bring Reverend. our way. Yeah. 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 Possibly the first thing that his life teaches us is that suffering is not unto death. It's not always punishment. Yeah. Yeah. Preachers, pastors, people of God, how dare we say that the demands of the church, yeah. demands of a district, yeah. can actually make somebody sick? Go right. ahead, go ahead, Reverend. Yeah. 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 Sometimes when you get sick, yeah. 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 sometimes you get All right. All right, sick of folk. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to be as professional as I can. Sometimes you get sick of folk that reflect the same color image that we do. You better go ahead. That, 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 that's a lie because if we did, then, then we will be placing ourselves as omniscient as God. Mm. No, 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 it's a lie. John 
16 and 33 says that I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And in this world you will have trouble. But take heart. Because I have overcome the world. John 11 and 4 says this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God. That the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Mm. Isaiah 53 and 5 says, For he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of his peace was upon him, and with his stripes, yeah, 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 yeah. Some stuff right now, but I'm yet still healed. My body might be wrapped in pain right now, but yet I'm still healed. Uh, he reminds us that all suffering is uh, it's not punishment, it's not unto death. All suffering is it's not because of stress and the demands of church or demands of a district. If it were, many of us. <laughs> Uh, we would have thrown in the towel by now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'd, be, we'd, be, we'd be sitting somewhere with a, a jacket, a white jacket on. Yeah. Come on, by now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lesson of this life is that you can live godly, yeah. serve the Lord with diligence, yeah. vigilance, and integrity, and still. He reminds us that all. That all trouble yeah. won't last our way. Second thing that he reminds us, his life reminds us, is that all strength is not physical. Yeah. Come on, come on. Is it all right? Yes, sir. I'd like to argue that Lord Watlington's, he, he, was, he was stronger even yet in his weakness yeah. than a bunch of men who were in the stride of their lives. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm with you. Like, I'm with you. Right. It reminds us that, that we, we, we can be all built up. We can exercise. We can work out every day and, and have all kinds of stamina and not and, and still not have the signs of a strong man. Yeah. Yeah. A strong man can handle the vicissitudes of life and keep a smile on his face. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, every time. Huh, uh, I, I saw Pastor Buckington on occasion, even after his sickness, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. he would always give God glory. Yeah. 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 And in spite of what he may have been going through, he still gave God glory. Yeah. Yeah. And I never heard him complain. Yes, well, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Third thing that we learned from this life every sermon. Is not in the pulpit. Can I argue this that his best son was not at Pilgrim? His best sermons were not in Mississippi. His best sermons was not at Second Missionary Baptist Church. His best sermons was not in the district. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But just like Paul, mm -hmm. while he was sick, come on, yeah. while he was weak, come on. Yeah. Uh, come on. then he was made strong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's when he preached yeah. his best sermon. Uh, yeah. He preached his best sermon after surgery. Yeah. Uh, after treatments yeah, yeah. and in rehabilitation centers and, and, and the church fellowship showing up uh, for district meetings with yeah. sickness in his body. Yeah. And here's why, because it's not about how healthy his body was, about how, how low his white blood cell count may have been. It's the quality of your life. Yeah. Uh, 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 I can help somebody. Help, yeah. help, help us, God. Pass. Along the way, if I can share somebody with the word or with the song, if I can show somebody he's traveling wrong, 
then my living shall not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a Christian art, if I can bring that beauty to a world abroad, if I can spread love's message that the master taught, then my living shall not be in vain. Time is filled with swift transition.
travel down the road to a man. At the end of their trip, as they were visited by a man, they looked to one another and said, Did our hearts not burn? Why did their hearts burn? Because they had been in the presence of God. Did our hearts not burn? As the man of God spoke to us. Amen. The proper thing to do when God has spoken to you is to create an opportunity to respond to what he has said. Amen. The program, as it is written, says that this is the time that we will extend an invitation. That's right. That's an opportunity for a response. Yeah. Hallelujah. When I was in grade school, a new kid came to school. His name was Joey. Joey didn't know very many people. And his birthday was coming around. And Joey went around from person to person and gave each of us an invitation to his birthday party. Yeah. I didn't go to Joey's birthday party. Yeah. The next day at school, Joey, Joey came up to me and he said, John, why didn't you come to my birthday party? I didn't really have a good answer. I said, well, I just, I just didn't know you well enough. He said, I extended the invitation to you because I wanted to give you an opportunity to get to know you. So here we stand right now. Extending an opportunity, yes. an invitation to come and to get to know Jesus, yes. get to know him better. Yes. Yes. He wants to know you. Amen. He wants you to know him. Yes. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes. And that the wages of that sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Yes, and if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If there's one who does not know him in the pardon of their sins, you can come. You can accept an invitation. He said, I stand at the door and 